dedicated to the Lord when I was a young child. I don't remember that either, but uh, we dedicated our children to the Lord. And, um, you know, when um, the, the, the uh, Bible says to train up a child and the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I keep asking the Lord, how old do they have to be? Um, if they, you know, so we just pray and understand and we trust God, His, His Word. And, you know, we need to realize, uh, I think sometimes, uh, the power of God. Um, I, uh, I, I got this message this week and I've entitled it, Unrealized Power. Unrealized Power. And um, I was, as I was reading the, uh, through the Word this last week, uh, I was uh, taken by a verse in there that the disciples asked Jesus. Now, Jesus on two occasions fed several um, thousand people with just a little bit of food, uh, some fish and some bread. Uh, and uh, He was good at making fish and chips, you know, I mean, He was... You wonder what we're going to have at the marriage supper of the Lamb? Fish and chips. Okay, I just want to let you know. Uh, but anyway, um, anyway, as uh, Jesus was ministering the word to the multitudes, He was also teaching His disciples to have faith in what He could do. And uh, today I want us to understand that it is possible to reach the city of Fernley with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and uh, you know, you might uh, make excuse or something, and you might say, well, we don't have the resources, or we don't have this or that. And, um, well, you know, with God, all things are possible. Amen? And I believe that uh, we, as the church in Fernley, Nevada, are able to, uh, to um, tap into God, our resources, tap into the power of God, and allow God to have His way right here in Fernley, Nevada, and uh, with the good news of uh, the gospel of Christ. Every man, woman, and child needs to hear, uh, hear the gospel. Every man, woman, and child needs to understand the gospel. And every man, woman, and child needs the opportunity to respond to the gospel. We might hear the gospel, but if we do not respond to the gospel, it doesn't do us any good. We might even understand the gospel, but if we don't respond to the gospel, it doesn't do anybody any good. Often we sit in our churches and just expect people to show up, but as a church we need to do what Jesus said and go out and tell. Okay, and so uh, uh, you say, well, I, I don't know what to tell. I don't know. Uh, I don't have very much in my hand. But uh, Mark chapter 8, 1 through 9 is where we're going to start today. Mark chapter 8, 1 through 9. And uh, Jesus was um, teaching his disciples. He was teaching the multitude. And, uh, and so he, on, on a couple of occasions, he's, he told the disciples, give these people something to eat and the disciples they didn't know what Jesus meant I mean they just says man we don't have enough money we to, to buy food we don't have this or that but uh, let's see what the power of God can do for us today it says in those days verse 1 in those days the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat Jesus called his disciples and him and said to them I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat and if I send them away fasting to their own house, they will faint. By the way, for uh, divers, uh, for different ones of them came from from far. Now, why did Jesus uh, tell this to his disciples? I mean, Jesus already knew what he was going to do, right? I mean, but he wanted his disciples to understand some things here. Uh, and it says in verse four, and his disciples answered him, "From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness?" And I think that's uh, the question that we ask in our churches. When, uh, from whence can we satisfy the people in Fernley with the bread of the gospel? With the living, He is the living bread that came down. He is the manna that came down from heaven. <clears throat> and a lot of times you say, well, how can we do this? How can we function as a church? <clears throat> and I might add, here in the wilderness. Because I mean, Fernley is kind of in the wilderness, right? I mean, we're out here in the wilderness and uh, uh, in the desert and different things. And uh, in verse 5, he asked them, How many loaves have you? And they said, Seven. 
Now, there's, there's 4,000 men plus women and children. I don't know how many. There may be 10,000 people there. We don't know. Um, <clears throat> I've been in seminars and stuff with 5,000 people. And that's a lot of people. 5,000 is a lot. And so, um, anyway, I, they said seven. Now, seven loaves of bread, from the last time I checked, is not going to feed 4,000 men and their women and the kids. And they said uh, seven. And he, he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And he took and, and the seven loaves and gave thanks and break and gave to his disciples to set before them, and they did set them before the people, and they had a, a few small fishes, and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them, and so they did eat and were filled, and they took up of the broken meat that which was left, seven baskets, and they that had eaten were about four thousand, and he sent them away. Now this, this is the second time that he's fed a multitude, with some uh, fish and some bread. And so, uh, let, let us uh, consider today what our gift in the hand of God can do to reach firmly Nevada. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would get this word in our heart. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would not go around with unrealized power. But, Lord, I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would realize what you have invested in us, Lord God. And, Lord, to go out and tell and share with others uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was in the Word this week, a verse, the verse hit me. And I would need to share it with you in, in the church. And that was Mark 8, 4. And his disciple answered him, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? I started relating this question to our church in Fernley. How can we reach Fernley with the gospel of Jesus? And some may say that we do not have enough resources. And that's what the disciple says. Well, Lord, we don't have enough resources. I mean, we got a little bit of money, and if we, if we go to the village, we don't have enough money to, to buy a little bit of food. And, and uh, they, don't have the, they didn't have the resources even, either to do that. But Jesus wanted his, wanted his disciples to understand that if we give Jesus what we have, he can miraculously turn a little bit into a lot. And we need to understand and realize the power we have in Christ. He told his disciples to give them something to eat, and immediately they started counting out how much money they had. You know, well, I don't know uh, I, what we can do here, Jesus. And, and you know, that's the way a lot of the church, they go around. And, and you know, uh, like my, my dad was uh, uh, fond of saying, you know, that person gawks around like a blind dog in a meat house, you know. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, a lot of times we go around and, and we wander around and, and, and all this power is available to us. And God has said, I want you to go and tell. And God has said, you step out in faith and I'm going to give you the rest of it. And, and a lot of times we, uh, we don't do it. And we say, oh, man, I don't know if I want to uh, do that because, you know, we just don't have the resources uh, to do that. I know. Let's get with the Southern Baptists and put together a program. You know, uh, they have a lot of programs and different things like that. And everybody uh, will get saved. And, and uh, we don't really want to do anything. We just work the program. <coughs> well, that don't work either. Because uh, if God is not in it, then we all we are doing is... Um, um, is go running around in circles. And so, um, he told his disciples to give them something to eat and immediately they started counting how much money they had. Jesus wanted them to realize his power. Offer to Jesus what you have. When I write a sermon and offer it to the Lord, I know it's not much. But I also know that if I leave it in the hands of Jesus, he will feed the congregation with his very word. You see, because I, uh, I am not, uh, I'm not here. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mike. Much of the time, like the disciples, we do not realize the power of God and what He, he wants us to do according to His will. Now, do we, as Firmly First Baptist Church, believe in the power of God? Amen. I mean, God's all-powerful, right? 
I mean, and so we believe that. And um, uh, but a lot of the church has day uh, has regressed into formalism. You know, Second um, Timothy three. I'm gonna I'm gonna read a, a little bit out of there. Second Timothy three. Second Timothy three and uh, one through five. It says, "This know that in the last days perilous times shall come." And we're living in the last days, and we see we're seeing the perilous times, right? Yeah. And here's uh, here's what people will be doing. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. All you got to do is uh, pay attention to Hollywood, and you'll see that, right? Or Hollywood, I call it. Uh, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. I mean, you know, when people uh, rip their children out of their womb, uh, that's without natural affection. I mean, Get rid of this problem I have. And they uh, commit murder of their own children without natural affection. Truce breakers. <clears throat> In January, we have a Right to Life Sunday, you know, and uh, there's uh, 100,000 people marching uh, in uh, Washington to overturn. Roe v. Wade. You know, I don't know if it'll get done, but, you know, because it's not law yet. I mean, we need to understand uh, that there we can, we can uh, speak out against these things in our country. It says, uh, traitors, verse 4. Let's see, let's go back to verse 3. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. That means uh, without self-control. Fierce. We saw. We we see that on television all last summer. I mean, this, these riots and people are fierce and and killing each other and stabbing each other and and uh, you know throwing bricks at you know uh, each other and different things. They're 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 just uh, fierce. They're despisers of those that are good. Hey, let's defund the police. Let's do this. Let's do that. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Now look at the next verse. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. Now, we as the church need to turn away from formalism and put on the mind of Christ. We need to, uh, and, and uh, you know, it didn't go really well with Christ down on this earth. I mean, face it, I mean, Christ, uh, uh, you know, he uh, started his ministry and three years later he was crucified on a cross and he, he went into the year of opposition and, and different things. And, and it really didn't, um, according to man's uh, view, it didn't work out well for Christ. I mean, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, and they came and, and they mocked him on the cross and different things. He saved others. He can't save himself. And they blasphemed him and everything else. And, and uh, you know what Jesus did? He trusted in the Father. He trusted in God to resurrect him. He laid it all down for us. And we need to understand that as we follow the Lord, we need to lay it all down for each other. And, uh, and, and why is that? Because we want to understand and we want to see manifest the power of God in our lives. 
You see, because a lot of times, you know, we are without power and we, un we do not realize the power of God. Why? It's because we are afraid to lay our lives down for Jesus Christ. We are afraid to witness to somebody. We are afraid and different things. And we need to pray for ourselves and we need to pray for this pastor for boldness that I may preach the word as I ought to preach. And we need to pray for each other for boldness that we ought to speak the word into others and have, uh, have others... Uh, understand what we're saying as we as a church need to turn away from formalism and put on the mind of Christ now David understood the power of his God I mean uh, I'm going to read Psalm 18 28 through 36 Psalm 18 28 Psalm 18 28 that's where we're at all right <clears throat> it says uh now, now Psalm uh, twenty, uh, Psalm eighteen, is a, a psalm about David getting delivered from his enemies. Okay, you ever you ever have enemies you need delivered from? You know, I mean, all the time, right? I mean, uh, the government and all that stuff. Uh, we need deliverance. Uh, but anyway, um, um, we can walk in the Lord. Now let's go to verse 20. I'm just going to, you can read the whole uh, 18th Psalm later, but uh, Psalm 18, and uh, I'm going to be reading uh, 28 here. Uh, For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leapt over a wall. I mean, David understood the power of God. You know, by you know, he was uh, up there. He was going through. A, a Saul was chasing him around the, the desert, and and he would he would go right into the uh, Saul's camp. You know, and um, uh, take his water bottle and you know different things. One time he cut off the, his uh, the back of his robe and, and everything. He had to repent of that one. He was sorry he did that later, but. Uh, I mean, you know, because and it says that God caused a deep sleep to come on that that army. David just went right into the enemy camp and uh, and uh, stole, you know, uh, Saul's spear and different things. He gave it back, but I mean, he just wanted to let let Saul know about the power of God. And, and it says, um, uh, verse thirty: As for God, His way is perfect. The word of God is tried. He is a buckler to those that trust in Him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? I mean, that God is our rock. God is our buckler. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds' feet. And that's like deer. A uh, hind is a deer. And setteth me upon uh, my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken in my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath held me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my, step, uh, my steps un under me, that my feet may not slip. David understood the power of God. In Psalm 60, verse 12, David says, Through God we shall do valiantly, for it is He that will tread down our enemies. We need to understand that, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, we might go into enemy territory. A lot of times we may uh, uh, speak to somebody that is uh, 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 opposed to the gospel, but that's okay. If they're opposed to the gospel, here's what you do. You shake the dust off your feet and you go to somebody else. We need to understand that when we have the power of God in us, we need to understand that when we realize the power of God is, we can take a little bit and God will turn it into a lot. When God is our source, we can look at a giant and understand that God is bigger than the obstacles of life like David did. You know, David uh, looked at this giant as he, he went to Saul. I mean, uh, here was the Israeli army not realizing the power of God. And here was David to come down there and says, I'll take this joker out. I mean, I kind of paraphrase that, but I mean, uh, you know, he wasn't afraid of him. Why? Because God was on his side, you see. And a lot of times they say, man, I don't know if I want to go with that guy. He's, he's big and ugly, you know. I, I went up to Hell's Angels before. I mean, this one guy had a great big knife. And I, and I was, uh, I was uh, telling him about Jesus. And, and uh, he says, this is a Jesus thing. He says, you leave me alone. And he had this big old knife. And I said, okay. 
<laughs> hey, I wouldn't go mess with it. I'd go with somebody else. If they're going to reject it, I, I'm not going to sit there and try to force something down somebody's throat. I, but there is a percentage of people right here in Fernley that would like to understand how they can get out of hell fire and go to heaven. Amen. Because it is a reasonable gospel. You see, and we need to understand that. When God is our source, when God is our source, we have <clears throat> His power in us. And I believe that this church can reach this city through the power of God. It will be when we offer God what little we have and expect a miracle from heaven that this will happen. Jesus told His disciple that all power was given, was His in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, 18-20 says this, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even till the end of the world. Amen. So if, if Jesus is with us always, even to the end of the world, does that mean that Jesus is still with us today? Somebody say amen. Because we need to understand that all power is with us today. We need to understand that Jesus is God of, of, of earth and He's God of heaven. We need to understand that even though we are small in number, and maybe there's twenty over 20,000 people, People in this town. I would like to see a firmly turn turn upside down for Jesus Christ. I'd like to see firmly, you know, people uh, warning other people, hey, don't go to firmly, you'll get saved down there. You know, I, I want to I want to hear people, you know, like uh, going out to Burning Man, avoid firmly because uh, boy, they come in here, they get saved, and they'll have to repent of their sins. I I think God can be a presence right, right here in Firmly, Nevada. Somebody say glory because I because we have the very power of heaven, and I. I'm not going to deny the power of Christ. No, you see, and I think we say, well, we're too little to do something, or we can do, we don't have enough resources, or blah, 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 blah. No, we've got Christ. Mm -hmm. What more do we need? You see, and Christ might ask us, well, what do you have? Well, it's not much. What do you have in your hand? Well, maybe it's a loaf of bread. Well, that's enough. Keep it right here. You know? The Lord's Supper is symbolism that the body of Christ is in each one of us. Right? Now, 1 Corinthians 11 23 says this. <clears throat> For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Do we need to remember Christ? Do we need to remember the power of God? I think we do because a lot of times the church turns into some kind of formalism. Well, let's go to church because it's the religious thing to do. If that's why we're going to church, we don't need to have church. We need to shut the door. If we are here as the church of God, if we are here displaying the power of God to a lost and dying world, that's what we need to be doing, right? Because it, in, unless we're doing that, we're denying the power of God. You see? So, as we partake of the Lord's Supper today, I want you to understand that this is to be done in remembrance of the Lord. And the bread represents His body. And the grape juice or the wine, whatever you want to call it, 
represents the blood of Jesus. And that bread was broken out of the same loaf and that grape juice was poured out of the same bottle. And Christ gave his life on Calvary for us. It says... He says in verse um, 25, After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do you as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as, oft as, uh, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Now that word show in the Greek language is the word evangelize. You do... Proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. Now, we haven't seen the second coming of Christ yet, but He's coming back. And will He find us in faith and in the power of Himself, or will He find us in formal religion of some kind? You see? Now, it's verse 27 Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Okay, so we need to be right. We need to be holy in this thing. Verse, because here's why. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, that word sleep in the Greek language is, you know, you've died. That means that you've died. <clears throat> For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chased of, chased of the Lord, and uh, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. I'm going to wait on it's going to, we're going to wait one for another. We're going to go to the Lord a minute. Now I want us to consider before we partake of, uh, of the Lord's Supper. Am I showing in my lifestyle? Am I showing by life and by lip the Lord Jesus till he comes back. Am I ingesting this bread and this wine into my body as just a religious ritual? Or am I actually believing in the power of Almighty God, of Christ in me, the hope of glory? You see... So I just want us to bow our heads and close our eyes a minute. And I just want to ask us, maybe the Lord's, you know, saying, hey, you need to forgive somebody. I know we, we all have people we need to forgive, right? <clears throat> For whatever reason, God puts aggravating people in our life. Maybe we need to say, Lord, I need to get out of formalism and I want to believe you. I believe that this church can do what you want us to do. I believe we can be your church right here in front of Nevada. I believe we can step out in faith. And Lord, I believe you can tread down our enemies. And Lord, I believe in your power if I offer to you what little I have. I believe that you can work through that and you can <clears throat> multiply it and people will be fed the very gospel. Lord, I just pray, Father, that this morning that, Lord, we would make the right decisions. And, Lord, I pray that we would pray and drink the cup and eat the bread worthily and Lord, I pray, Father God, that Lord, you'd forgive us of our sins. 
I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would be right before you <clears throat> in doing this, Lord. And, Father, uh, I just pray you'd forgive me of my sins. I pray you'd forgive the sins of my family. And I pray you'd forgive the sins of my church family, Lord. And, Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. I'm going to ask... Uh,